If you are a backend developer, if you are a web developer in today's time, this video is super important for you because in this one, we'll be discussing about how do websites really work on a DNS level? What are top three DNS records you should know about, which allows you to bring your project live and all about that. Let's go ahead and discuss that. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So building a website completely, programming it with any framework or anything is one job, but actually bringing that website live is a completely different task. Whether how you set up the domains, the SSL part, the DNS, everything should be in place. So in this one, I want to talk a bit about how do domains work. So we have talked a little bit about DNS in the past. So you can refer the past videos if you want to get into that. But in DNS, there are three records I want to talk about today. The A record, the CNAME record, and the name server record. These three records are super important in DNS. Of course, there are a lot more records which exist, but these three records are super important because they allow your website to be functional. Let's talk about a record first of all. Now, let's say you own the domain codedam.com, right? You have bought it using some sort of domain registrar, whether that's Cloudflare, whether that's GoDaddy, anything, and you want to make your website live. Now, one of the things which you have to do is you have to somehow map this domain name to an IP address. That is like the easiest way to bring a website live, right? The easiest and kind of the only way possible, right? Because your domain name actually needs an IP address. For the IP address, let's say you hosted, you started a new EC2 server, in AWS and when you create an EC2 server, AWS automatically gives you a public IP address, IPv4, which would look something like 137 point something point something point something. It could be pretty much anything in the range which AWS owns. Now, in order to map this domain name to this IP address, what you have to do is in your domain registrar, you have to create an A record where your domain name, which is the main domain, sometimes it is referred as at the rate, sometimes it is referred as the full domain, is, is the, you know, is the basically what needs to be mapped. And then there's a field for IP address where you would enter this 137 point something point something point something, right? Now the way this would work is, whenever your computer, whenever somebody in the world, this client would ask to visit codedam.com, their browser would try to make their way to the DNS servers all along the way to figure out what is the IP address of codedam.com. And this is the last record they will hit. I mean, if this record is present, this is what your browser would eventually get back. This is what your browser will also show in the networks tab in the browser, right? When you inspect, you get a networks tab and you click on that item and you see the source IP address, right? That IP address is this A record which was entered in your DNS. Awesome. So now you have created an A record for your root domain on, you know, let's say this IP address 1.2.3.4. Now let's say you are creating a subdomain called magic.codam.com. And what you're trying to do is that you want this domain to also point to codam.com right for some reason now some websites do this because they are your hosting provider for example if you're hosting on Vercel, you would have seen that you have to enter something known as cname.vercelldns.com and in other cases you might have your own custom use case but the point i'm trying to make is that if you go to your dns now and if you try to enter magic as a cname record in your dns and enter the domain as codedam.com so what you have essentially done is not provided an IP address to magic.codedam.com, right? In this case, for the root domain, this is this at the rate signifies root domain, which is just codedam.com. You created an A record with an IP address mapping, but for the magic part, the magic domain, you just created a C name for magic. So what this right here means is that this would be the record which would be returned when you're when some random client tries to connect to your system but at the end of this chain cname of magic record means that your dns provider or whatever entities over here will perform one last request and go to codedam.com to see what is the ip address of codedam.com right so this in nutshell is actually equivalent of writing an a record of magic and then 1.2.3.4 but it's almost like it's dynamic in nature because if sometime later 
you change the IP address of codedam.com, you don't need to update this particular record. This record would automatically get propagated depending on what the value is, right, of codedam.com. So this is what's, what Vercel essentially does to you as well. When Vercel says that go ahead and enter cname.vercelldns.com, what they are actually telling you to do is go ahead and enter a record of 76.76.21.21. .21. I think this is the Anycast IP address they own. But yeah, I mean, this domain over here just resolves to this particular Anycast IP address. And Anycast is something which is very, very interesting. Maybe something which we'll discuss later. But this, I, this domain corresponds to this IP address, at least in today's time. The final record, which is also important, but not really. In real world scenarios, it's not as important for the domain management part because you usually have to do it just once but this is still important because name server record actually gives the ownership of a particular subdomain and all of its subdomains to another provider right so what do i mean by that so let's say you have something like go.codam.com record as a name server to something like ns1 .codedam.com and this ns1.codedam.com has an A record of some IP address 3.4.5.6. So this part is very interesting because what's happening over here is that what you are essentially saying is that if I visit xyz.go.codedam.com what the browser and what the whole universe of domain name system would try to do is that it will go to this particular record, it will see, okay, the name server of go.codedam.com and everything beyond that, I mean, in terms of subdomain, is handled by this particular name server, right? And the IP address of this particular name server is over here, defined by our A record. So the query for this, this particular IP address to extract out what exactly is the IP address of this domain goes to a server running on EC2. And this is where the fun part begins. I mean, assuming that this is an EC2 server. And if you are open, if you have opened a DNS server on port 53, then actually it is your responsibility to return what the IP address of that particular domain is. This is why we mostly, you would not really see using this as your custom domains usually it will be provided by your own dns provider like cloudflare or something but in case you wanted to create your own dns system the way you would do it is you would add a name server record to you know the branch where you want the dns to be controllable add a name server add an a record this particular machine actually should be listening on a dns port 53 at least udp and this should be responsible to return there would be a dns query and it should return answer back that DNS query. And whatever it answers back would be the result IP address of that particular domain, right? So if it answers back, for example, 1.1.1.1, it would probably see a Cloudflare page, rather a Cloudflare error page, because Cloudflare would say that, hey, we don't recognize this domain, so something seems fishy. But in, in a nutshell, in your browser window, which we talked about a little before in the networks tab, you will actually see 1.1.1.1 as the resolved IP address. So this is this is like pretty cool. And this is something we intend to use in CodeDAM as well in the coming months where we would want to give you permanent URLs for your projects. So something like nehul.codedam.dev would start pointing to your own personal website or personal project, whatever you have deployed. So all of that would involve us writing a custom DNS server, a custom DNS provider and having all this sort of mapping. But yeah, I mean, this brings us to my final record and closes actually my final record in the DNS system, which is the name server record. So just to summarize, DNS is an important, super important networking part, which you should know as a backend developer. And I hope these three records taught you something new today. If it did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps the algorithm boost up content and uh, leave a comment down below, which one is your favorite, which one have you used, which one have you not used. If you have any questions, happy to answer that in the comment section as well. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching